Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Away from getting young people into uh, the electoral and political space, let's move to Kaduna State, where Reverend Joseph Hayab, the chairman, Christian Association of Nigeria, is joining us via Zoom to share on uh, the current uh, issues in Kaduna State. Good morning, Reverend Hayab. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we received uh, news this morning that four more of the uh, Bethel Baptist uh, students have been set free or have been found. Uh, quickly share with us what the current situation is. Yes, um, the night of Sunday, after the release of the 28th, four of our children escaped. Three of them were lucky to have been found by a good Samaritan who brought them home. One of them was unlucky. He was found by a greedy Nigeria who, instead of bringing them home, decided to call and negotiate his own side of it. To show you how people have become heartless in our country, that night he had to insist after long negotiation within the hours to collect 130,000 from us and even instruct us to buy a small phone of 5,000 for him and some recharge card for 5,000. Then he collected cash, 120,000. But in all, four of them are back to their parents and we have 83 still with the captain. Well, um, I'm, I'm shocked. Has the person who collected 130,000 been arrested? Was he reported to the police yet? Who is going to arrest him? You see, the situation we have is that if these children can even escape the way they are escaping, it tells you that these bandits are not too far from where our security can fetch them. Look at the ages of these children. But you see, it's just something uh, you will go and be answering questions. You know, when people are in such situation, uh, I'm fond of using adage now, like our brothers from the East. Uh, there's an adage that says that if someone is in danger, even if you give him a knife, he's going to grab it as long as he's going to escape. So I think that's the situation we are now. We are doing virtually everything as long as our children will come back. Uh, the issues about who arrest him, well, we know the law will catch up with him very soon. But you know, if we divide ourselves into, uh, divide our attention into that, we'll just get ourselves into more problems. Our focus now is get our children home first. And, and so, you know, this, this, of course, makes me ask about the interest and the efforts of security agencies in either negotiating or getting these kids released. Because if you have four kids, you know, escape, and it's not the first time that we're hearing of anybody of, of uh, kids escaping. Um, I think there was some, some that happened a um, uh, couple of days ago, sometime last week. They should be able to trail or ask the kids to, you know, take them back or direct them to where the rest of them are. So is, is, is there any security effort at all? You see, I'm a pastor and a church leader. I don't want to do security work. You know, one of the challenges with Nigeria is that when you start guiding uh, leaders or offer advice, they will say, you want to teach me my job. And so sometimes we don't want to become teachers of people in their job. Ours is to do our own role, um, playing the role of a parent, playing the role of a church leader, playing the role of a father, a pastor. My job is to stand with these parents, stand with these children until they are back. I don't want to go and teach people their job. I think they are better off. Uh, one of the things that I can say in this medium is that it was when we have even gotten those 28 students, passed them on to their parents, and I was driving back to town from the school before I got a call from police asking me what happened, how did we get them, how, where did we find them. <laughs> you can't believe this. So I don't want to start teaching people their job because the more we explain these things, some people who probably see us as friends start getting angry because we are speaking bad of their work. But Nigerians know that something is wrong. Things are not going the way it's supposed to be. Um, Reverend Hayab, is, is there any confirmation with regards to uh, payment of ransom? Um, has any money been exchanged hands? Are there still negotiations going on? Uh, well, you see, the other day I did explain this that I don't want to belong to the school of saying there was no money that was given. The only thing I'm not going to get involved now is how much was given. Because the focus is to get the remaining children back. But truly, money was given. Simple. 
And what they wanted from us, we gave them. And even they requested for additional food, we gave them before the initial release of the 28th. So it's not that there's no another new negotiation. Why they chose to give them, to start releasing them in budgets is something we cannot explain. But from our negotiation and understanding with them, it was done. They're supposed to just release all of them to us and nothing more. Why are all these things happening? Since I'm not part of the bandits who are connected to them, I'll only make a guesswork, and I don't want to make guesswork for Nigeria. I'm going to speak what I know, and what I don't know, I leave it until when I'm sure of it, then I'm going to say it. So there was a negotiation. Money, food was asked. First, we gave. They asked for money. Yes, the church didn't give the money, but parents wanted their children to come out, as you heard them say. They contributed the money as it was expected. They gave, and it was delivered. They promised they were going to release the children. They did not release, and insist another food should be brought. Food was sent again the second time. Then a day or two later, they sent. You see, there's something that we say people will, the day they actually collected the money, we we're hoping that they were going to release the children in the evening. And when we call them, they just tell us, that, sorry, we've gone to town, so we couldn't give you the children today. That means they are connected with some somewhere in the town. Where did they go to town? Huge money like that. They must have gone to the city where the boss who is in charge is doing. The problem is that these people, we are not seeing them one to one to talk. We are communicating with them on phone. I've been asking myself, the new registration we force and trouble Nigerians to do, why is it not affecting these people that we are communicating with them and no one can trap them? It's only affecting innocent I have when I express myself. Recently, when there was a ban on Twitter and I just posted my concern about the ban, security were sending it to me to show me they have seen it. And I just laughed. If they can see what I said about the ban on Twitter, why are they not seeing what these evil people are doing and they've not gone after them? I mean, it's a shame in our country. What, what is the, this is too sad, what is the current state of these parents? Um, I said it uh, a couple of days ago that Nigerians across the country must have run into debt trying to raise funds to pay ransom. So when we're talking, I'm guessing millions of Naira now from people who normally wouldn't have these funds available. So what is the current state of these parents who have had to source funds to get their kids back, including those who still haven't gotten their kids back? Well, they are not, we are trusting God that there will be no more additional funds, but uh, sourcing that fund wasn't easy for many parents. I remember one of them yesterday, I called and she was in hospital. The hospital bill was even difficult. Uh, this way and manner she got the phone to contribute as part of her daughter. It's, quite, it's exactly the picture you are seeing. That's the woman and her daughter. It's quite sad. That's the widow, the wife of one of my late friends. Uh, that's her only daughter and she's doing no work. Uh, brother, sometimes when I speak about this, I'm really, really, really hot in my mind. But there's nothing we can do. Uh, parents are in debt, truly, truly speaking. But what else can you say? We just pray that with life, there's hope. We can get over these things. Is there any word from the governor of Kaduna State uh, as it stands? He is in, he is aware of it, and he's he's showing concern. He's he's showing concern. He's disturbed about what we're going. That's the word. So I'm just repeating what they've been saying. He has been briefed. He's showing concern. So that's the word. He's showing concern. But we've had a lot of concern. We don't want concern anymore. We want action that will stop our children from becoming afraid of coming out. See, yesterday, before you may not have asked this, the paramount ruler of my tribe, an 83-year-old man, over 80, who has been a paramount ruler, a first-class chief for over 40 years, was kidnapped. So if as highly placed people like that will be kidnapped, though it was in Islam, but that's to show you that everywhere, nowhere is safe. So this is a challenge we are having in Kaduna State at the moment. So all the government will tell us that he has been briefed, he's showing concern, and any other person who speaks and shows no, that concern is not enough, is an enemy or is identifying with an interest. So it was quite sad. But my focus as a leader now is honestly how these children can come back and how these parents will, because those parents whose children are not back are really angry, are not uh, happy, but we are consoling them, we are giving them assurance, mm -hmm. but you know it's not easy. I'm not going to lie about that. It's not easy. I can't, I can't even imagine what this, you know, would feel like. Um, can you share with us, because I, I, you, you, you look like you need to also rest, uh, so we would have to let you go in a bit. Can you also share with us, you know, what the kids has, are saying, what they've, you know, been through, um, you know, while in captivity? Does any of them have any health challenges that needs to be quickly addressed? 
I just told you one that uh, was in hospital. Oh, actually, all those children had to be taken to hospital, all of them. And it, some of them are still, some because of their strength of, uh, in their body, they didn't last long, but a good number of them are still in hospital. Uh, Sim, the daughter of my late friend, is still in hospital with her mother. Uh, we, I'm not a medical expert, so the doctors are caring for them. One of the parents who spoke to me this morning told me that, look, my son had to vomit twice, and it was so bad, but he's stabilizing. He's still in the hospital, he's stabilizing. I said, well, let's do it. Because we didn't take them out to the hospital ourselves. We allowed the parents to take them to their the hospital since we have the other 80 something to attend to. We didn't want to have a divided mind. We're only asking information. How is it all? your child doing? What is going on? But at the moment, uh, a good number of them are in the hospital. Uh, I think their parents will be in better position to say what is their condition. But the few that have spoken to me told me they are improving. We hope so. I could see many of them couldn't walk the other day. I just hope that they can walk better. You can see from the picture there that young man is finding it difficult to walk. When you look at their foot, you will know that these children went through hell. And they look absolutely traumatized. Um, um, I'm also going to be, of course, hopeful that the rest 83 are released pretty soon. Um, I'm going to let you go in a bit, but I want to ask, you know, if, you know, these ones who are, you know, being able to escape, does that in any way show that the kidnappers are losing capacity to hold all these kids, um, you know, any longer? Since kidnapping business started in Kaduna, people have always escaped somehow. Uh, so that shows that these kidnappers are not what we are rating them to be. I think what really is the problem is we don't have the will to go after them. They are not what we are rating them to be, but we don't have the will to go after them. When we go after them, I'm not a security expert, although I was born and brought up because my father served and fight in the army, in the civil war, so I grew up in the barracks. I have some knowledge of these things. Uh, I have served in many paramilitary organizations as a volunteer. I believe that we have capacity in Nigeria that we can stop these people using technology, using modern equipment, using everything within our reach. The excuses we are giving that we are just afraid of casualties have only made more casualties. So we just need to be honest to ourselves. Our leaders, we love you, but we are just angry because you are not doing it right. If you see us expressing anger, uh, well, there's no way all of us can be governor and president. There must be just one person. Our job is to see you do it right. When you do it right, we'll come to this same studio and press you. But when you do it wrong, we'll sit here and complain and tell you you're not doing right. So our, lead, our, our government have what it takes. Our institution have what it takes. The question that is begging for answer is, why are they not doing it? Why are they giving some excuses that even a layman will know that this excuse are not tenable? And I bring back this rhetoric question. How could these small children in that, this age understand what it means to escape from this bandit? and we are telling them the areas where they escape and they cannot condone that area and start something. Look, strategically, these children are supposed not to even last one week. They're supposed to have scared these people, but it has not worked. We just keep talking because the way we think we want to deal with security is talking, 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 no action. Um, um, Reverend Ayab, um, can you also speak with regards to uh, closing down schools in Kaduna? Would you agree that that should be um, you know, the step that should be taken currently until, you know, this is all over. Uh, it's that time. step is wrong. There, you cannot have an option than to accept that step now because of the situation. Because if you say that step is wrong and you don't want it, and more children are kidnapped, now, we'll still come back to the same welling uh, table. So if that step is really a step to give them time to work out security measures, to give alternative places for schools, Honestly, they have my support because at the moment, there is, you, you just have to understand what we are all going through. So any option that will reduce these pains, we'll pray and ask God to bless that option so that it will help. That's really sad. Um, we, of course, we hope that the um, uh, um, uh, traditional ruler that you mentioned, the 83-year-old, I hope that he also is set free as, as quickly as possible. And many of these uh, 83 kids also find their way back home. Reverend Joseph Hayab, you need to rest, um, but thank you very much for joining us. And uh, we hope to I speak with you it. again. Thank you. We'll take a short break um, here on The Breakfast and we'll be back. Stay with us.